Well, howdy, hey folks, Cole here, and man, am I excited to bring you this video today. This past weekend, I had the distinct privilege of going to Halo Outpost Discovery in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I had a complete blast, and I'm here to tell you my impressions of the event, so let's jump right into this. So the first thing I want to get out of the way is this video will probably largely be me gushing. I'm a huge Halo fanboy, I'm not going to apologize of it, so my glasses of which I viewed this event through are definitely going to be rose-colored. That's not to say I'm going to offer how the event could improve as time goes on, but just know that I'm going to be very much just gushing about this event. I want to preface this whole video by saying that this was massively important for Halo. I think this step, having a sponsored Halo convention, Halo Con event by Microsoft and 343, I think is an enormous stake in the ground that completely communicates to people that Microsoft really, really values Halo, and they want this to just explode as a brand IP far beyond just a game that we play into an experience that we can tangibly go do. That's exactly what this event was. It was a tangible Halo experience. It was exactly the kind of thing that any long-term fan especially growing up playing the games have thought about wanting to have. Being able to go to a place, see replicas of our favorite characters, weapons, and just have all kinds of different exhibits to experience in the flesh. It's exactly what we got today. So we're going to talk about my overall impressions. We're going to talk about what my favorite part of it was. We're going to talk about what I would offer or recommend 343 and their event staff maybe consider down the road to improve this experience. And then I'll let you know if you should go to one of these if you have the opportunity. Spoiler alert, you definitely should. All right, overall impressions. So first and foremost, this was just a complete fan service, especially to long-term fans. Even if you're somebody who just picked up Halo maybe within the last year or two, you would still appreciate this. But if you're like me and have been playing Halo since Combat Evolved, I mean, I was 11 years old the first time I played that. I'm 28 now. I have been loving Halo for almost two decades, and this experience was completely a fan service to those people. I mean, it was completely just what you as a Halo fan want to have the opportunity to go do. To see the life-size Elite, to see the life-size Master Chief, to see the actual Warthog, which is enormous by the way. Pictures or video do not do that machine justice. Holy smokes is that vehicle enormous. This event, it completely and absolutely engages fans at all levels. I loved that they had a very museum take about it. And actually, if you look into the lore of Outpost Discovery, that's right, it actually has lore behind it, which is, we'll get to that in a minute, how cool that is. But if you look at how they just very kind of museumized it, where you would go from exhibit to exhi exhibit, you would look at replicas, you would maybe go to a wall where it would show the different scales, the different alien types, you would see all these little informational plaques that would, if you were a longtime fan, you would read, it would totally kind of suck you in from a lore perspective. But if you were maybe a parent or a sibling or significant other who really didn't know much about Halo, but you were going with whoever it was, you would have an opportunity to read whatever was in front of you and actually have a tangible understanding of what it was. I thought 343 did a great job just communicating what the exhibit was, you know, if it was the assault rifle, if it was the elite, if it was the master chief. It wasn't overly wordy, but it also gave credence to people who would know exactly what those things were to make you feel like, oh yeah, that was cool to read about. It wasn't just like, oh, the master chief like kills a lot of aliens and he's the hero of humanity. No, it talked about like he was a Spartan and what a Spartan meant and, and how they were secret super soldiers. I mean, again, it wasn't super in depth, but but my point here is that it totally grabbed everybody's attention. So I bring this up because that was one thing I was curious about is, okay, the mom who's bringing their little son maybe, or the dad who's bringing their kids who's never played a video game in his life, is he going to have any idea what's going on? And, and yes, absolutely. People who don't know about Halo can go to this event and leave knowing about Halo. I think it's, of course, an objective that 343 has had knowing that this is an event that's going to cater to its long-term fans, but also realizing very well that, hey, we're going to have a lot of people come in here who don't know what Halo is, and so let's make sure we can introduce this very well. They did exactly that. A small quality of life thing that I also really loved was how spacious the event was. In the video, you might get a little bit of a sense of just how big the event centers are and how they spread out all of the exhibits so that everything wasn't crammed together. Now, I know a lot of people have criticized this event, saying there's not enough to do. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but as 
as I spoke with some other people that I got to meet there, some people actually said to me, you know, it's really nice that all the exhibits aren't just jam packed together, that it's not claustrophobic, there's a lot of space, you can meander as you want, not feel like you're bumping into people. And I thought that was really, really well designed. I'm sure as the years go on and they continue to do this event, like they're planning to, that they'll probably add more exhibits. So I'm sure the space will get a little more confined, but most of these, you know, event centers have plenty of room. That's never going to be a problem. It was just very clear to me that they really thought about placement of each exhibit or activity to make it so it was easy to walk from one to the next and that you didn't feel like you were just jammed in there bumping into people. That was a really nice little quality of life thing. So the event was very smoothly run. Staff were friendly and helpful and there was really no issues to speak of whatsoever that I observed. Lines went smooth, events got turned over pretty quickly as patrons came through, there was no breakdown of any of the exhibits or the events. So far all in all it went really really smoothly. And I should say this before I continue, I only went one day so I can't speak for how Saturday and Sunday went. I didn't see anything blow up on Twitter so I'm assuming they went smooth as well but I just went on the Friday event so that's where my perspective is coming from. Now the life-size replicas were crazy. I mentioned earlier how big the Warthog was. My goodness is that vehicle huge. I believe it's been said that that was originally some kind of Volkswagen that they tore apart and then rebuilt. Crazy to think so because this Warthog would eat most Volkswagens for lunch. Giant vehicle. The Elite was super menacing. I'm pretty sure both the Elite, the Warthog, and the Master Chief were all to scale. At least that's the impression I had. And boy howdy, are Elites enormous. Especially the energy sword the thing's holding, as you can see here in the video and pictures. Just massive. Obviously the scale changes when you're playing the game a little bit, but if that was the size of the actual Elite, which again I think it was, could you imagine being chased by one of those? I mean, you're dead. If you're not smartin', you're donezo. <laughs> Just massive. That was something that really kind of blew me away. I was not expecting the Elites to be that big. I mean, I know they were you know, always between like 7 and 8 feet tall, but when you see just the whole bulk of the thing and its menacing look at its face, and it has a ton of teeth. The art, the artistry is incredible. I mean, such attention to detail. It looked so real. So did the chief. But I was, I was most impressed with the elite. Just the, just how menacing it was, and just how it carried itself. Super, super cool. Now, an observation many people have made as uh, they talked about Orlando, and now that as they'll talk about Philly, is there's nothing in the entire experience post Halo 3. Unless somebody's playing like Halo 4 or 5 at one of the game stations, or maybe there's something about it on the content stage, there was no uh, exhibits or replicas of anything post Halo 3. Now, a lot of people are quick to think like, oh, well, this means they're totally just going to retcon or abandon everything in Halo 4 and 5. That's not true. Again, think about the perspective of 343 and Microsoft wanting to engage the masses about Halo. It makes the most sense to give them the confined story of Halos 1, 2, and 3, talk about the Covenant War era, and just educate people about that. And that's enough information, especially for the person who knows nothing about Halo, to not be inundated with all of this stuff. I'm not going to knock Halo at Post Discovery for not including anything Halos 4 and 5. I bet you, should this event continue to evolve and grow as the years go on, it will include some post Halo. Halo 3 era stuff, but that's just an observation that I made. It didn't bother me at all or ruin my experience, and I'm a guy who loves Halo 4 and 5 for the most part, so don't look at that as a negative thing. That just is what is, and it's still totally fine. doesn't ruin the experience at all. All right, so what was my favorite part of it? That's easily the ring experience. This is an interactive uh, exhibit that you kind of walk through from a museum standpoint. There is some video and pictures I have about this playing right now on the screen, but the last last part of it, which is really the meat and potatoes of this exhibit, you couldn't video your picture in there. Essentially what happens is you go into this dome room that has like screens all throughout the ceiling as a big dome, and you watch like this interactive kind of ride it takes you through. And essentially what happens is, is you get a cam feed of a UNSC Honeybee, which is a little uh, manless drone that is used to kind of scout around halo rings, and you get to fly through a halo ring with one of those. And just the level of detail that was in the halo ring as as you're flying through the vistas and through forests and through forerunner structures is mind-blowing. Now, I thought this was really telling what 343 included in this. It was just you exploring a Halo ring, thus being called the Halo experience, but it simply, to me, I think was the very first glimpse that we get at what we could expect in Halo Infinite from a exploring a ring standpoint. Now, maybe that's a stretch, and it very well could be, but as I sat there and just watched the event, watched the video go through as we flew through this Halo ring, I very much felt like, man, this is what Halo Infinite's gonna feel like. Even some of the architecture of the land 
and the geography of the land as he went through really reminisced what we've seen in some of the trailers already for Halo Infinite. So I got really strong vibes that, that was like just a little tiny tease of what we could potentially be expecting. Now I could be totally wrong, that's just what I was thinking about as I went through. Before you get to that part though in that event, you're walking through kind of just an interactive guided tour. It has like a piece of a Halo ring that you can look at while um, an AI speaks to you about what Halo is. Uh, there's a Forerunner Sentinel, an Aggressor Sentinel, which the scale of those things are massive. Absolutely in game, they are not that big, but boy howdy are just the run-of-the-mill Sentinels enormous. I was not prepared for that. It kind of blew me away when I saw how big it was. There should be some video about that as well here uh, on the screen, but it was crazy big. I was not expecting that in the slightest bit. Also, the Flood Infection Form, the size and the scale of that, I didn't know that Infection Forms were that large, and that's terrifying. You're telling me you ha I have a swarm of those chasing after me? Oh, I'm dead as well. I'm not a Spartan or in the air flying the machine away from them. Massive, massive of aliens very scary but the attention to detail on it was incredible very very cool and frightening to see after that on Friday we had an opportunity to listen to Steve Downs and Jen Taylor do a seminar for about an hour Bravo uh, Andrew Dzinski sorry Bravo if I just butchered your last name but we got to hear the two of them just talk about their experience as the voice actors of these characters and it was absolutely incredible. I didn't go in with any expectation, but leaving that seminar, it was so clear to me that these two people cared deeply about their roles in this universe, and they want to make sure that they deliver the best performances of these characters as they possibly can. I mean, there was no reluctance in them at all. There was joy in their hearts. You could hear it in their voices. They're talking about their respective roles, what it's like to work in Halo, what, what it's like to work together. Really, really incredible. I felt so encouraged in ways I didn't even know I needed to be after hearing them talk about it. That Jen and Steve are completely bought in to what they're doing. They've embraced Halo and its community and just what it means as a video game to people. And it, it was just so cool to sit and listen to them. Because we get to be a part of this awesome story. And that's, that's mainly where we're coming from. Because we are nerds and we don't play because we're lame. We're lame. <laughs> and we can't play. Um, but we can watch people play are good and enjoy it and uh, the story is what is I think it really hooks me into it and it's an honor to be a part of something that is so rich I think it's a dream of any actor to be a part of something that is I mean the books and everything I mean everything this this world is so well built and so flushed out and that I, I can't say that enough. It's yeah. an honor to be, and it's also an honor to be a part of a community. We had a signing earlier, and people came up to us and told us that it was an honor to meet us. It's an honor for us to be here and to meet you and to feel accepted in this. Yeah, like it really is. Yeah, I, I don't have much to add to that, uh, other than that uh, it, it is, uh, uh, you know, what Jen said, it's such a such a gift and, and what pulled me into it initially was the, the story of Halo and it was right up my alley. I'm a big science fiction nerd and I just love that part of it. And then to be able to play, you know, uh, man. A, you know, a superhero. Guy. You know, I when I was growing up the superheroes were Superman, Batman, Spider-Man. And you know, what what young boy didn't Fantasize. That's still the case today, too. It still is the case. And now, and now to be able to do that with uh, with this character, it's just you know, it's just a gift that just keeps on giving. Beyond that, I love just seeing the life-size replicas. Again, I know I'm gushing about the Elite, the Warthog, but they were so cool to see. It was also really neat to see the life-size replica of the MA5C uh, assault rifle, as well as the Magnum. It just was really neat to see the weapons of destruction we have been using throughout these games kind of right there in front of your face, so it was really neat. All right, so how could this improve should 343 want to make this a better experience? Which, talking to some 343 staff, they definitely want to do that. I overheard both Kiki Wolfkill and Brian Gerard, or Sketch as we know him, talk about how even from Orlando they've already improved probably a hundred plus things in terms of just general flow how the event goes but they also plan to do this annually if it continues to make sense and it's popular and I would imagine that it's going to continue to grow so what would I tell them to do 
First is more stuff. I mean, that's the feeling that you get. There's definitely a lot there to really sink your teeth into for quite a few hours, but you just want more, right? Like I spoke about seeing the replicas of the Elite and the Master Chief. Well, down the road, how about we see a grunt? Let's see a full-size scale hunter. Let's maybe see a ghost. You know, some more just things like that that would just be fun to look at, read about. Maybe even let there be a station where you could get in the Warthog and take a picture with it, or maybe hold one of the weapons and take a picture. That would be kind of neat as well. But just having more replicas and more stuff in general would be really neat. Now, probably the largest complaint that I've seen on Twitter and Reddit of the places is how they've handled the Jen Taylor and Steve Down signings. They really weren't super clear about where and how to go about getting something autographed. Apparently only about 80 or so people each day are able to obtain a ticket via raffle or something to be able to then go and get something signed. That was never made super clear and it only really is available to VIP ticket holders. Now I was not a VIP ticket holder. I don't necessarily have a problem with VIPs getting first access or the only access. I mean that's probably part of being VIP, but it would be nice if that was just clearly told to people like on the Halo Outpost Discovery, like, look, if you want to meet them and you want them to sign something, here's the stipulations, here about, here's how you go about it. I never saw that if existed. It sounds like just from the amount of people who were upset about this, it was never made clear. So that's something that I would look to just maybe steward a little bit better or plan a little bit better for the next time. Whether that could be changed for the next event in Chicago or maybe this needs to be retooled for next year, I don't know. But that's something that I think definitely could be touched on. Now there's some events I can't speak about. I did not do the laser tag, I did not do the VR, and I did not do the Covenant escape room or the Pelican experience. But why Cole, why not? Well, for a couple reasons. One, the lines were pretty long and I didn't feel like sitting there in line just to do something that was going to last pretty quickly when there was other things I could go do. Part of that has to do with the fact that only I went, the people who I was going to go with, that fell apart, so it was just me. I still had a great time going by myself. I got to meet some people who I knew on Twitter, who I'd never met before in person, as well as just started talking to some people in, in line of some things I did do. But there were just other things that were totally applicable that I could do as a single person there. So I went and chose to do that. I'm sure the VR and the laser tag and the Covenant Escape are probably really great, and I'm sure there's other reviews about them so go find those and look at those but I, I just think they're probably better experiences when you have a group and I just chose to just go do some of the more solo things that's what I chose. Now this is not a complaint at all. This is actually probably a compliment, but lines were super long and that's good because it just means tons of people were coming to experience the Halo Outpost Discovery. But if there's some way to mitigate that, either maybe bring duplicates of the same exhibit so people can get through it faster or just bring more exhibits so people are kind of a little more spread out throughout the day, that might help a little bit as well. But that's not really a problem. It's like going to a theme park. You're always going to wait in line for the best experience. So that's going to happen regardless. I don't know how they can mitigate that, but if you go, just expect lines are going to be long. Now that's just my observation from going on Friday. I bet you Saturday and Sunday were more busy, so lines were probably longer. So maybe if you're able, go on the Friday events, get yourself out of work or school, and go then because there probably will be less people overall. All right, so what's my recommendations for you? Should you go to this event? Well, as I said earlier, yes, you absolutely should. You should at least go for for one day. Right now, the scale of the event, if you go for one full eight or nine hour day, however long it is exactly, you can definitely experience everything or very close to it. I don't know that a weekend is necessarily required unless you just have the resources and want to spend that money and go for the whole weekend. By all means, go for it. You'll have a good time all three days, I'm sure. I had the opportunity to go a second day. I chose not to only because at the end of the Friday event, I was like, you know what? I feel like I've gotten the full meat and potatoes of this. I've really enjoyed it. I don't feel compelled to come back again. Not in any way does that speak negatively about it. I just got the experience I wanted, so that was it. So if you're thinking about going, I would say at least spend the money for a one day pass and go for one day. I don't think you would regret it. Now, if you can go, I would definitely encourage going with others. As I said a little bit ago, I went by myself. I still had a total blast, but I think this kind of event would be even more fun with a group of friends. So if you got some local Halo friends, I just happen to not have any that are super local to me, then grab them and go because you guys will have a blast. You'll love talking about all the exhibits. You'll love playing the games. You'll love interacting with other fans. It'll be a great time. If you go by yourself, then go and wholly be there. Go throw yourself into everything. Meet people. Don't be afraid to walk up and say hello. There actually were quite a few more single people going who didn't go in a group than I I anticipated. I actually met a guy while we were waiting to play Halo Reach on the PC, which feels so good. Oh man, is it smooth and snappy and crisp and visually it's incredible. 
make sure to play that if you get to go. But I met this other single guy in line who just had gone by himself and we started talking and he was saying, hey, you know what? I've come by myself. I'm choosing to throw myself in and have a good time. This was kind of about halfway through the day and he sounded like he was having a real blast. So don't let yourself not go just because you don't have anybody else. Have the courage, go meet people. You will have a good time. But regardless, if you go, choose to go in the essence of what makes you love Halo. Go choose to be a part of something that I believe is going to grow into something truly special as an experience. At the beginning of the video, I said that this was the tangible Halo event that Halo fans have always wanted. And it truly is. But it is only the tip of the iceberg. 343 has the chance to do something very special. Logistics will change and I'm sure this event will grow and evolve into something truly fantastic. But this is valuable and has the potential to grow into something that I think will be a critical component of experiencing Halo to the fullest degree in addition to the written and digital media that we currently have. Yes, it's gonna have some growing pains. Yes, there's frustrations on the internet about it. But be those as they may, this is still a wholesome, awesome, joyful experience that 343 and Microsoft are tangibly giving us as Halo fans, and you owe it to yourself as a Halo fan to go and experience it and add to it. So, what do you think? Let me know in the comments below if you've gone to one of these events or if you're planning to this summer. Let me know what your favorite part was if you went, and if you aren't sure still if you're going to go or not, let me know below what has you on the fence. I would so love to talk with you about it and see if I can tip you over the edge to actually go. If you enjoyed this video, come interact with me on Twitter. I tweet about Halo quite a lot, as well as other games that I'm interested in playing, as well as just sharing my life there on Twitter. I would love to invite you to come do that along with me. Also, feel free to come to hang out with me on Twitch. I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday by 9 p.m. Eastern, and would love to invite you to come hang out with me there. I play a lot of Halo, play a lot of Destiny, as well as some other games. I would love to talk with you about things that you love as it regards to Halo or any game that you play. I would also love to invite you to come listen to the FPP Gaming Podcast that myself and some friends do. We talk about everything gaming related within the gaming industry and we'd love to invite you in on that conversation as well. But regardless of what you choose to do, I hope you choose joy today in your life and I hope you take that joy and you go give it to the next person you interact with. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.